Good morning, Westside. Good morning. It is an honor to be invited to do a reflection for you. I take it as a sign that you think I'm doing okay as your MVC. And of course, as firstborn, I'm always attentive to how people respond to me. I'm also a doer. You know, the kind of person who comes in and starts picking up plates after a circle supper, or a potluck who has an unending stream of ideas about things to do. Which is unlike the punchline for the only religious joke I know. What do you get if you cross a Jehovah's Witness and a Unitarian Universalist? Someone who knocks on your door and does not ask you to do anything. <laughs> Me, I would want to do something. And I doubt other Unitarians would be at a loss to what to do either. As you know from Dick Trice's excellent litany in the Exploring Membership classes, Unitarian Universalists are wildly overrepresented in any list you'll see of important Americans. For example, do you know that four and a half American presidents were Unitarian and or Universalist? Yep. John Adams, his son John Quincy Adams, the ever-memorable Millard Fillmore, and Howard William, Ta William Howard Taft, who was a Republican and later Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, the only person in American history who has served in both positions. The half, of course, is Thomas Jefferson, who was certainly a deist, and the Episcopalians claim him also. Another UU who was appointed to the very first United States Supreme Court by George Washington was William Cushing. Oliver William Wendell Holmes also served on the Supreme Court in the 1930s. Then there are the social reformer UUs, Abigail Adams, wife of John. Suffragist Susan B. Anthony, Robert Nash Baldwin, who was the founder of the ACLU, Clara Barton, who founded the Red Cross, Morris Deeds, co-founder of the Southern Poverty Law Project, and Viola Liuso and James Reed, two UU martyrs who were murdered in Alabama during the Civil Rights Era. Famous UU scientists and inventors include Alexander Graham Bell and Linus Pauling, and NASA astronaut Laurel Clark, who died in the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. There are media mavens, like Owen Young, who founded RCA and helped co-found NBC. Entertaining UUs, like Julia Childs, Paul Newman, Joanne Woodward, Keith Olbert, formerly of MSNBC, now a sports commentator. Issa Maria Barnwell, who is a member of the amazing vocal group Sweet Honey and the Rock. Superman, Christopher Reeve, the recently deceased Pete Seeger, who popularized the anthem, We Shall Overcome. There's Rod Serwin, creator of the Twilight Zone, authors Louisa May Alcott, E.E. E. Cummings, May Sarton, Kurt Vonnegut, Ray Bradbury, Julia Ward Howe, who wrote The Battle Hymn of the Republic. It doesn't sound like a UV hymn. <laughs> and James Pierpoint, who wrote Jingle bells. Politicians range from Paul Revere and Daniel Webster to Arthur Schlesinger, former U.S. UUA President and U.S. Secretary of Defense Bill Cohen. There's Elliot Richardson and the mother of Barack Obama, Stanley and Donna. The list goes on. What you may ask is the relevance of this rather long and still very incomplete list to my topic today, Connecting the dots. Well, here it is. All of these people, and many, many others, put their faith into action and made a difference in the world. Why else do we show up on any given Sunday morning? The New York Times and Washington Week certainly are intellectually stimulating, Coffee in bed and sometimes just time to be quiet can certainly be restored when you've had a week with too much to do and way too little time. It's not that we're all of one mind in what we believe either. For example, I was at a gathering of Westsiders just recently, because we do party well and often together. 
sitting around the table of seven, there was a former Catholic, a Lutheran, a Christian, a deist, two humanists, and me, raised Southern Baptist, formerly attending Quaker meetings, a UU now for 20 plus years, and at one time married to a secular Jew. All of those differences are things I value about being a UU. And when I think of how that works in a congregation, the metaphor of church family comes to mind. Now, some of you may cringe at that. They don't call them nuclear families for nothing. <laughs> but I think the analogy is a good one. Every member of Westside shares a history. We are all different, and yet we're bound together by that history. For some of us, those shared connections are longer than the relationships we have with almost anyone. And like families, too, we share a worldview that's grounded in the belief that we are each and all basically good people. Connecting the dots within a congregation, then, is mostly a matter of taking our UU principles seriously, affirming the inherent worth and dignity of every person, respecting the different paths that we each take in our free and responsible search for truth, despite there being as many different definitions of truth as there are people in this room. Then there's the impact of our individual choices that can make on other people, for good or ill, because most you use I know are doers. Another level of connection, the dot connecting the dots, becomes clear when we step outside our own journeys and step out even further than our church family. One of the ironies, I believe, is that UU values are so extremely right for this time in history. And yet our numbers, well, we're holding our own, but we're not blossoming. And you would think we would. Across the U.S., two out of five Americans don't identify with any faith. And three out of five think it's irrelevant. These are spiritual but not religious folk. And the nuns who don't identify with any religious tradition. Now I've got a whole long riff about what I think that's about. But what I want to do is focus on how we connect the dots with what we believe and what we do. Not only inside these walls, but outside in the world. I have a question. Please raise your hand if you have an answer. How many of you have heard you Uism described as that church where anything goes? Oh yeah. How many of you believe that's true? So what's the difference? What's the disconnect between your experience and mine of what you Uism is and the misinformation out there about the church where anything goes? Now, as an aside, I should probably tell you my assumptions. For example, I assume each and every one of us in this room wants Westside and UUism to be vibrant and energizing. <coughs> For not only those of us who come to services, but to everyone who comes through these doors. I'm also assuming you want Westside to serve the community and especially serve folks who are out there who are really UUs. I discovered I was a UU. I've been one all my life. I just finally discovered a church where that was the case. And there are other people out there who share that unawareness. So connecting the dots might be helping people who don't yet know their UUs discover that. So why is it, or how is it, we help those folks understand we have something to offer that's different from Washington Week or the New York Times. Now, if my assumptions are accurate, you will be pleased to know I have an answer. <coughs> I believe the answer does not involve snake handling and it does not involve knocking on doors. But before I reveal that answer to you, I want to ask you to do something. This is where Edward has agreed to help me. Visual aid here, I have an index card. Not everybody will have a pen, but for those of you who do, I have a request.
On one side of the index card, I would like for you to write all of the things you do individually to support this church. It may be Peace Corps. It may be a sugar reader. It may be bringing used ink cartridges to be recycled. It may be circle suppers. There are so many different things. It may be being on a West Side Board Committee. There's an insert in your order of service with all those committees. What is it you do? The stewardship of your time, your treasure, your talents. Just briefly, cryptically, if you will, and you don't need to sign it. I am going to ask for them because I think it's pretty interesting in a time of transition to recognize how much is going on in this conversation. Like what you do as volunteering, giving back to the larger community outside these walls. You may be a member of the League of Women Voters. You may volunteer at the SPCA. You may mentor kids. Give of your time in any number of ways. Give of your dollars to any number of organizations. You may use your talents outside these walls in many ways. <clears throat> if you would, when you've jotted down those things, pass your cards to the center aisle and everyone's going to help me once again by grabbing them and bringing them to me. can be left as people file out. Wednesday lunch brunch, peas court. I baked pumpkin, pumpkin bread for guests. I made the sign for the gay rights parade. I have and will help as a greeter. I usher. I'm part of the school PTA. I'm a music volunteer. I do trash pickup. We have a cleanup day coming up soon. I'm on the stewardship committee. I'm an RA teacher. I'm on the interim task force. I'm an usher greeter. <coughs> I'm on the worship committee. I'm in the choir, which was beautiful this morning. I teach non-traditional students. I'm part of SCAC. I work with community <laughs> hospice. I recycle. I donate clothes. I consider Westside my contribution to, out, to the outside world. I'm a music director. I'm on the worship team. I do quilting for Samaritan House. I help with stewardship. I donate to the auction. I work with the Girl Scouts and cookie sales. I'm an RA substitute. I'm on the finance committee. I sing in the choir, I give money, I attend services. 
you know? I'd be out of luck if nobody did. I do karaoke. I do the Peace Corps. I'm a professional associate. I'm on the chaplain corps. I teach RE. I bring school bucks box tops. I volunteer for special events and parties. I get together with West Side friends. I work with Room in the Inn. I volunteer at children's school. I donate to EWG and UNICEF. I donate unused goods to select charities. Can you see how wide ranging the commitments of West Siders are? You all are making a difference in the world. And again, what's the link between all of these things and connecting the dots? I would suggest we all come from different places. The thing that's unique and ties us together is that we choose to be Unitarian Universalists. And it's not perfect as a family, but we stick with it. And we do things in the world that reflect our values. Which brings me to our call to action. I want you to think about connecting the dots, as you've written here, outside these walls, over the next 30 days. I'm going to challenge you, I'm going to challenge myself to do something that lets people know I'm one of those people at the church where not just anything goes, but a lot of good work goes. I'm not meaning to make it hard. You don't have to go knock on doors. You might want to put a post on Facebook. I do that sometimes when I read something out of HuffPost that's really interesting and it may relate to faith-based issues. I share it with a link. You might just say to somebody where I was on Sunday with the lunch bunch after church. We've got this great group of people that go to lunch. And today it's that Spice Thai restaurant. Why, does it, why do I ask you to do this for a month? Well, two reasons. One is, sometimes it takes a long time for people to recognize that you're doing something different. You take out the trash once, that's a great thing. You take out the trash every day for 30 days, you've changed your behavior. And the other thing is it takes time to develop new habits. I think it's a good habit to let people know where we come from. And for a lot of people, that's uncomfortable and different. So, practicing over time. There's a flip side to this, too. I think it makes you feel good to do something that affirms your values. I know it does me. So, over the next 30 days, I'll be checking your Facebook pages, and I hope you'll check mine. Because it's a good thing to be Unitarian Universalist in the world, in the congregation. And especially, imagine what would happen if somebody sees what you've done and who you are, who's really a Unitarian Universalist and just doesn't know it yet. And they get exposed to this church family in a way that they wouldn't have if you didn't take action. What's not to like about that? May it be so. If you would, stand and Rise in body or spirit and join in singing our closing hymn number 287, Faith of the Larger Liberty. 